Hi, boys and girls. So, thus far in our science lessons, we've talked about flashlights, right? With And we've made our own flashlights in class, which was really fun. We also have talked about magnets and their poles and how they like and repel each other. And we've also talked about light, right? Yesterday, we talked about rainbows and how light can help create different colors, right? Light is made of different colors. So today, we're going to talk about energy, right? This is, made, this is everything we've talked about so far, all inside one book, right? Energy and electromagnetism, okay? So we're going to be reading a small section of this book today, and our vocabulary words are going to go in our dictionary, okay? So I'm going to read the first chapter today and we'll be adding new vocabulary words to our dictionary notebook. Okay. Let me zoom in a little bit. Beautiful. Okay. Edison sees the light. The filament, oop, that's one, going to be one of our first words. The filament burns out too quickly, Mr. Edison said. We have to find a better material to make a longer lasting filament. Thomas Edison, born 1847, died 1931, was the most famous inventor of his time. He invented the phonograph, the motion picture camera, the first copy machine, and hundreds of other things. He is most famous, however, for improving a product he didn't invent, the electric light bulb. The problem with light bulbs before 1879 was that they burned out too quickly. The filament is the part of the light bulb that actually makes the light. When an electric current flows through the filament, the filament gets so hot that it glows and gives off light. The hotter the filament gets, the brighter the light. But the hotter the filament gets, the faster it burns out. All right, before I move on to my next page, I'm going to write down those new vocabulary words. So we've got filament, I don't know what that word means yet, but hopefully we'll find out by looking in the glossary a little later. So filament, right, right here. And then I'll leave a little extra space for today. So filament is number one. Then we have light bulb, which I'm pretty sure I already know what that is, but I'm still going to use the glossary's definition of it. And then we've got one more electric current. That will be number three for us. Electric current. E-N-T. Period. Electric current. Okay. I'm going to keep reading and see if we can find any other vocabulary words. And here it shows us Edison with his light bulb, right? So it's right here in his hand. Let's keep reading, let's see. Edison's short-lived light bulb was a simple device. It was much like a modern incandescent light bulb. In an incandescent light bulb, two stiff support wires hold the filament. A clear glass globe surrounds the filament for protection. The glass globe is attached to a metal casing. The tricky part is how the support wires, which are part of the circuit, connect to the metal casing. One support wire attaches to the side of the metal case. The other support wire attaches to a small metal disc at the bottom of the base. Hmm, I'm getting a little confused. Let me look back at this photo. 
So they mentioned those long support wires, right? And then the middle part, we had the filament, which is what lights up inside the light bulb. So if you have a spare light bulb at home, or if you're with mom and dad and you feel like unscrewing a light bulb out of a, light, a lamp, feel free to look closely and see if you can see those support wires and the filament in the center. And then it also mentioned that glass globe, right? That's the actual glass outside, the shell almost, of the light bulb, okay? All right, I think I understand what's going on now. Let's keep reading and learn some more. Let's see. The tricky part is how the support wires, which are part of the circuit, connect to the metal casing. One support wire attaches to the side of the metal case. The other support wire attaches to a small metal disc at the bottom of the base. The base contact point, so the metal spot at the bottom of the light bulb, must not touch the main part of the metal case. This is important. When electricity travels to the light bulb in a circuit, the electricity must flow through the filament. When you put a light bulb in a circuit, electricity can be delivered to the light bulb. When the circuit is complete, the electric current will flow. The electric current has energy. The energy produces heat and light as the light bulb does its job. The energy leaves the light bulb system as light. Oh, so the energy produces heat and light and energy leaves the light bulb system as light. Hmm, interesting. Edison tackled the filament problem with hard work. He is credited with saying, invention is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Hmm. Well, I know what inspiration means, right? That has to do with being inspired and having a good idea to create something. But perspiration, he's actually saying sweat. It requires hard work, right? And you might get a little sweaty when you invent something. So perspiration, okay? Edison directed his team to try every imaginable material to find the best filament. It is said that they tried and rejected 2,000 materials. Edison needed help. All right, let's see what words we have on this page that we can add. <laughs> These words might look simple, but it's important to know their meanings for the future when we continue to learn about energy. Wires. Let's see, number five it can be circuit. Number six can be contact point. We've got number seven here for E electricity, electricity. And then what else do we have? We have energy, heat, and light. Let me write those ones down. So we've got, oops, I forgot to skip some lines here. That's my fault. So number eight is going to be energy, E-N-E-R-G-Y. Nine will be heat, H-E-A-T heat and number 10 is going to be light all right perfect let's go on to the next page Ooh, almost dropped my book <laughs> all right help came in the form of lewis latimer that's him right here this lovely african-american gentleman born in 1848 died 1928. Latimer was an experienced draftsman and inventor. He had been working on the filament problem too. Latimer discovered that a carbon coated cotton thread made a good filament. He got a patent 
or the carbon filament. Inventors get patents from the government when they invent something new. When Edison tried the carbon filament in his lab, he agreed that it was the best material. Edison bought the patent from Latimer. Now Edison could use the carbon filament in his light bulb. When we think of carbon, think of um, kind of like coal, right? It's a black material. Coal is something very similar to carbon. In fact, coal is mostly made of carbon. So think of something similar to that, okay? Edison had to solve one more problem to make a useful light bulb. He knew that things need oxygen to burn. He predicted that if he could remove the air from the glass globe, there would be no oxygen and the filament would not burn up. He was right. This new light bulb lasted months instead of days. So heat and fire need oxygen in order to burn, right? When they have a lot of oxygen, when they have a lot of air around them, they burn bigger, brighter, and hotter. But if there's no oxygen inside the light bulb, then it will burn for a lot longer of a period of time, right? So this new light bulb lasted months instead of days. Thomas Edison had seen the light. Now it was time to show this new light source to the world. It was New Year's Eve in 1879. Edison's team strung lights from their lab to the train station. A crowd of more than 3,000 people came to see what would happen. It was a very dark night and all the gas lights had been turned off. Edison stepped up to the platform and threw the switch. All the lights came on. The crowd cheered. Edison understood the importance of electric lighting. It could change the American way of life. That's why he asked Latimer to join his team in 1884. Latimer stayed with Edison for years. He wrote patents for new inventions and books on electrical engineering. All right, we don't have any bold words here, so we don't have to add anything else to our dictionary. Let's go to the next page. Many years later, in 1918, the team of scientists and engineers gathered to celebrate Edison's birthday. They called themselves the Edison Pioneers. So we know that pioneers means the first people to do something or first people to go somewhere. Kind of like how we have pioneers when we first settled America, right? Out in the wild, wild west, we had pioneers. So by calling themselves the Edison Pioneers, they're saying that Edison is kind of like their leader and they're creating new things that haven't been done before, okay? Louis Latimer was the only African-American among the engineers. He also was one of the 28 founding pioneers. Light bulbs today. In Edison's time, the only way known to make electric light was to make a filament so hot that it glowed. The glowing filament gave off a lot of heat and a good amount of light. It takes a lot of energy to make light by heating a filament. Today, we have alternative ways to make light that don't need nearly as much energy. The long white tubes that produce light are called fluorescent lamps. A fluorescent lamp does not have a filament. Instead, the tube is filled with gas. When an electric current travels to the light bulb, the gas begins to glow and give off light. The light is not quite as bright as an incandescent lamp, but the amount of energy needed to produce the light is far less than the energy needed to heat a filament. Okay, so what this is saying is that an incandescent 
light. Those were the first kind of lights that were ever invented, right, by Edison and his group of pioneers. Well, an incandescent light burns a lot hotter and it burns a lot brighter than a fluorescent light. But it takes more energy to make an incandescent light bulb work than it does for, for a fluorescent light. A fluorescent light is a little bit dimmer. It's not as bright and it's not as hot, but it uses less energy in order to create light. Okay, let's go on to the next page. Let me zoom in a little bit, make it a little easier for us. We also have compact fluorescent light bulbs. The tube is much thinner and it is wound into a coil to save space. Compact fluorescent light bulbs screw into standard sockets designed for incandescent light bulbs. Replacing all of your incandescent light bulbs with compa compact fluorescent light bulbs can save a household several hundred dollars every year. So this is what the compact fluorescent lights look like. Look around your house. Do you have any light bulbs that look like this? They're more eco-friendly. In 1962, a new light producing technology was developed. It was a tiny device called a light emitting diode or LED. Oh look, we used this, we made our flashlights, right? One was longer than the other for the legs. He called them legs, Mr. Macarelli. And then it had a light on the end. LEDs produce light by using a small amount of energy to emit a ray of light. The LED doesn't waste energy by producing heat. So it creates light, but no heat. The first LEDs were dim and produced only red light but they were extremely efficient. So they didn't need a lot of energy to create the light. As electrical engineers continued to develop new LEDs, they developed amber and green colored LEDs. Oh, we used a green one to make our flashlights. The colored lights made it possible to convert traffic lights oh, to LEDs. This saved cities a lot of money. Eventually, an LED was developed that produced pure, bright, white light. The newest technology for lighting homes and businesses is LED lighting because modern LEDs can produce bright white light using much less energy, resulting in a in huge cost savings. You might have seen flashlights that use clusters of small bright lights instead of a single light bulb. Those small bright lights are modern LEDs. Do you have any lights like this in your house that look like a whole bunch of tiny lights put together to make one big light? I think I might have one outside, a floodlight that lights up my driveway. I'd have to check though. All right, let's go to our glossary and write down our definitions. So let's see, here we are at the back of the book at the glossary. Super important to know where that is whenever we're reading a textbook. And now we can find our definitions. So in your dictionary at home, you can write that down the definitions with me, or you can look them up on dictionary.com. So let's see, the first one is starts with letter F, filament. Ooh, there it is, filament. Okay. It says the material in a light bulb, usually a thin wire that makes light when heated by an electric current. Okay, let me write that down so I don't forget what it is. The material in a light 
bulb, B-U-L-B, and then in parentheses, usually a, oh no, I didn't mean to, I closed it by accident. Uh, sorry. Usually a thin wire. And now I'll close my parentheses. Okay. That makes light, M-A-K-E-S, light when heated by an electric current. Let me write that down. When heated by an electric current. Period. And then to remind myself, I'm going to draw a little light bulb here. And I'll do the little swirly swirls first, right? This part right in the middle of my two tiny swirls, that tiny little piece, that's going to be my filament, right? These would be my long wires in the side, and then that would be my globe, right? Like that, that would be my light bulb. Okay, next up, we actually want to define the word light bulb. So let's find that in our glossary. It would be under L. So it's going to be on the next page. Let me turn my page over. There we go. All right. Ooh, and there it is, light bulb. Ooh, and there's light too. We can skip ahead and write both of them down at the same time. Let's do that. All right, light bulb is a filament held by two stiff, S-T-I-F, F, stiff wires and surrounded, S-U-R-R, sir, round ed by a clear glass globe. Okay, let me write that down. Clear glass bulb, B-U-L-B, -B, bulb. Okay, perfect. And I still have my first drawing of a light bulb over here, so I'm just going to keep that next to it. I don't have to draw a second light bulb. And we already saw that light was right above light bulb, and it looks pretty easy to write down. So let's write that one down really fast. So light, observable evidence of energy. Okay. And light's at the very bottom of mine, right down here. So a little dash, and it says observable evidence of energy. So that's what I'm going to write. Observable evidence, right? Proof, evidence of energy, E-N-E. R G Y. Observable evidence of energy. There we go. It fits. Okay. Of energy. Okay. Let's keep going. Next up is electric current. All right. We'll go back to the first page. Let's see. Hmm. Electric, electromagnetic. There it is. Electric current. All right, let's see. Electric current. Let me put this one on the top. The flow of electricity through a conductor. All right, let me write that down. The flow of electricity through a conductor. All right, perfect. The flow of electricity through a conductor. And I see that electricity is right below it. 
So I can keep going. I'll skip a few more again, just like before, and write down the definition for electricity. Okay. Energy that flows through circuits and can produce heat, light, motion, and sound. Okay, let's write that down. Electricity is energy that flows through circuits, C-I-R-C-U-I-T-S, and can produce heat, comma, light, comma, motion, it's the ability to move, and sound, and sound. And think about this in your own home. If you have e electricity, right, and things are plugged into a wall, a wall socket, and they're powered with electrical energy, they might be able to produce heat like an oven or light like a lamp. Maybe it makes motion, maybe it moves around and it could also produce sound, right? Maybe it's uh, a radio, maybe it's your stereo, okay? All right, let's keep going. Let's see if anything else that's on our definitions list is on this first page. Let's see. We still have wires. That's probably too, that's probably a lot later in the, dic in the dictionary in alphabetical order, right? But let's see, we have circuit. I bet you circuit's on here. Oh, it's right on top. Circuit, a pathway for the flow of electricity. Oh, so that creates the path of how electricity flows. Let's write that down. A path way for the flow of electricity. E lect -ri Awesome. What about contact point that I forgot to add the end to? <laughs> contact point. Where is that? Ooh, contact point. The place in a circuit where connections are made to allow electricity to flow. All right, let's write that one down. Let's see, let's put this up top so we can see both things at the same time. Contact point, the place in a circuit. So the place in a circuit, C-U-R-C-U-I-T, in a circuit where connections are made to allow electricity to flow, are made to allow, A-L-L-O-W, electricity, E-L-E-L-E-L-E-L-E-L-E-L-E-L-E-L-E-L-E-L-E-L-E-L-E-L-E-L-E-L-E-L-E-L-E-L-E-L-E-L-E-L-E-L-E-L-E-L-E-L-
to do work. So we need energy all day in order to do anything, right? In order to work, in order to play, in order to think, we need energy. If we don't have energy, then we do not have the ability to do work, right? We're out of energy, we can't work then. All right, awesome. We still have heat and wires. And you know what? I see heat right there. Let's write it down. Heat, observable evidence of energy. Oh, just like light, right? We can observe light, we can see it, and we can observe heat. We can feel it. And sometimes when it's really hot, the air kind of has like a weird fuzzy quality to it. Have you ever seen that before in the summertime maybe? So heat, ready? Observable evidence of energy. All right, it's the same exact thing as light. Let's finish the last one, wires. Now, I know we have wires in our home, but maybe they'll give us a special type of definition for this word. Ooh, I see it at the very, it's the very last one in this whole book. Wire, a metal or solid substance through which electric current moves. Okay, let's write that down. A metal, M-E-T-A-L, metal, a metal or other solid substance through which electric current moves. Oh, can we not fit the whole thing? There we go. Through which electric current moves. Through which electric current moves. M-O-V-E-S. Okay. We have 10 words that we did today, all from our energy and electromagnetism book. And those words were filament, right? Which is the center, the tiny part in the middle of our light bulb that lights up. We have a light bulb, which I'm sure you have at least one of them in your house right now. I wonder if it's incandescent or fluorescent. We have electric current wires, which I know you have at least a couple of those in your house. Circuit, right? Circuit, a pathway for the flow of electricity. Contact point, P-O-I-N-T, right? The place in a circuit where connections are made to allow electricity to flow. We have electricity, energy that flows through circuits and can produce heat, light, motion, and sound, right? Energy, which is the ability to do work. We need energy to do everything in the whole world. And then we have heat and light, which both mean an observable evidence of energy. All right, that's all we have for today, my friends, for science. See you next time.